Hello, and we're back with another Disney discussions coming at you like a ray, like a beam, like a shark, like all of the good things uh, coming at you. And this time, it's my choice. And we're getting weird, we're getting funky, and we're getting real live flesh people in Disney films. We're talking underrated live action not the cartoons, none of that, but real people giving it large, giving it all of the beans. And we're going to be talking about four different films. We're going to be talking about Bedknobs and Broomsticks. We're going to be talking about Sky High. We're going to be talking about those Freakiest of Fridays, the 2003 version, and then the other one, Holes. Um, and yeah, so we're back. Welcome back, everybody. Rhea, Megan, Mike. Uh, we're back again, uh, reunited in another wonderful, wonderful, truly wonderful reunion. How are we all feeling? I thought we'd watched the wrong film <laughs> when you started that. <laughs> I was like, are we doing the zombie movies by Disney? Oh. I was like, we've watched the wrong movies, Mike. No. <laughs> yeah, completely. No, no. I'm, I'm just, Had you just... planned that opening? <laughs> you just come out. I don't know. Oh, uh, I like I... the beans part. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm full of beans. I'm full of beans today. All uh, human beans. It's been a long day. It's been a long day. So mm. whatever is here and here in the in the, in the brains and coming out of the words of the mouths is is what you get. So unfiltered, uncut, <laughs> unfiltered, uncut. This is why I edit mine so severely. <laughs> <laughs> it would just be a lot of that kind of shit coming out. Like oh my god, about the flesh. He needs, he needs to, yeah, he's talking about the flesh again. Fucking hell. <laughs> cut that out. That's not <laughs> Disney talk. content. Oh. He's cutting him out. Talking about flesh, fleshy bits. <laughs> um, but yes, we're here again. Um, I wanted to do live action because I think sometimes. We forget about the live action because the the animated stuff is so iconic, so important, and you know, I, and in in a way, it doesn't age quite as badly as maybe some of the live action stuff does. But also, I don't think it's given like it's fair due. Sometimes I think there's some really good underrated live action Disney stuff, and I think we do tend to forget and kind of put that to one side a little bit in favor of the more iconic animated stuff, which we've already talked about multiple times and will do in the future. Um, but yes, I don't know how you guys feel about Disney's live action stuff. It's weird because when you say Disney live action, I think most people think Mary Poppins and I think Flubber, but I've only seen <laughs> Flubber like once ever, so I can barely remember it. I think Disney live action, Flubber, do you know what happens in it? Robin Williams, it's a bit of and, green goo, and he's kind of wears glass at some point. I think the the flubber, he, I'm and sure he plays bits. he plays basketball. I remember that. Yeah, so I was like, I don't know why I think of of that. It's kind of like the whole Michael J. Fox. Oh yeah, from Team Wolf. Like, <laughs> of, the, of all well, the ones too. you think of, of all yeah, the ones too. you think. Of. Um, but yeah, and if anyone's watching on video, you'll see my chair <laughs> my has chair lost is all of the gradually. <laughs> a minute ago, it went, and I just stuck, and I fell, maybe <laughs> jump. So you'll see me at different chair heights. At this time, I'll so, try not to let it interrupt the podcast again. So when Sorry. where Me Megan physically slides, your chair is sliding. <laughs> yeah, to accommodate. Can we do this? To even each other out. Mm, yeah, it has absolutely. to be balanced. She just Ooh. sabotaged my chair. That's really what happened. Hmm. No, I didn't know, did I? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so thank again. you for that. Balance it. <laughs> Ballot. We we can't get into Chairgate again. We, we spent a good <laughs> half an hour on that uh, before we even started. So, <laughs> but yes, live action, live action. So actors acting live in front of a camera. Um, I know Disney's going through a few. Um, well, all of actors, live actors are having some difficulties at the moment. Uh, but we're going to talk about some modern classics and some classic classics, I guess. Um, all all of your picks are like around about the same age. I'm I'm like showing my age because clearly I'm over fifty years old. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, where where do we want to start? Who wants well, to go? Well, yours is the weird one. Mine's got, the weird. And one. You're saying Wait, so many. Is, which one was Dan's? Uh, Bedknobs and broomsticks. To be fair, I would have picked that if it hadn't already been chosen. Oh, all right then. Really? Because um, that's interesting. Because I would have picked yours if you hadn't already chosen it. Uh, oh, also, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have picked also, any of yours. I couldn't pick the other ones that I wanted to pick because we're going to do a episode on those. Because um, it's yeah, so you know. All connected. Interesting. We're, we've all we're all in the same mindset, uh, talking about the flesh again. Um, <laughs> we are one brain. Yeah, we're all one. <laughs> we're a hive mind. Uh, 
Well, I, I guess I could talk about bed knobs and broomsticks then if we're all up for that. Mm-hmm. I'll lead it. I'll lead it. Bed knobs and broomsticks. What other film could you see which has a witch fighting off Nazis <laughs> with the powers of Satan in a Disney <laughs> film? And you've got a young lad talking about his no- knob and what he's going to do with it and how he uses it. And also some casual sexism. It's a film for all the family. <laughs> um, so, this film, um, I, I picked this film because it has a real kind of, um, has a strong familial co- connection to me. Because I used to go around to my grandmother's and we used to spend a lot of time there. My mum worked a lot when I was younger, uh, being a single mum. And we would spend a lot of time with my grandmother, my dad's mum, as well as my mum's mum. And we would, my sister and I would argue and fight and fuss and and you know tear chunks out of each other and we got on uh, we, we got on like a house on fire absolutely uh no we had we had a lot of issues with each other um but there's two films that we would put on at my nana's and we would all sit down and we would all enjoy so one was wizard of oz and the other was bed knobs and broomsticks so this uh, i didn't realize i always felt like this was like a spiritual sequel to mary poppins because it has a lot of those similar kind of beats the music's quite similar the characters are somewhat similar young children magical older lady slightly domineering you know uh and then uh and then the same actor from both of those films uh, <laughs> mr banks is the the uh uh Emilius brown in this professor Emilius brown um so we would all sit down and we all watch these and enjoy and there's fun and it's bouncy and there's some real good character i think the character the children in it are really good they've got some really strong characters um i've i've always really enjoyed it i think there's a lot of fun to it um and i didn't realize how directly connected they were to each other the two films so um initially um Pamela Travers, who wrote um, Mary Poppins. If you've seen Saving Mr. Banks, another very good Disney film, you'll know the kind of story of that and and how she wasn't entirely keen on her book being adapted in certain ways. Um, so there was a bit of argy-bargy there. So at the time, they also bought the rights to Bedknobs and Broomsticks. And they were gonna, they were talking about maybe developing them in develop developing that instead of Mary Poppins and uh, it didn't quite happen because they didn't think they had the budget or the technology to do it. So they put it to one side. Um, one of the sequences in um, Bedknobs of Broom 6, the bobbing along sequence, is from Mary Poppins because like, they couldn't do it for whatever reason. So they decided to put it in here. Um, Julie Andrews, they asked to come back for this role of Eglantine. She did not. And then Angela Lansbury got the role. Again, the same actor who plays Mr. Banks comes back. And and yeah, so there was it was kind of always a little bit connected. So I kind of enjoyed the the weird kind of half connection it has. Um, but I, I I've always been a fan. I think it's a lot of fun. It's got a lot of elements um, that I've always enjoyed. Uh, the animation, the mixing of animation as well. I think some of the special effects still hold up. They're not perfect, but I think some of them are are quite groundbreaking for the time as well. But I think. Overall, I think people overlook this because Mary Poppins was so beloved. But I think people should give Bedknobs and Broomsticks a chance. <laughs> the tiniest you... little clap. Yeah. <laughs> Pathetic. Yeah. Pathetic. It's gentle. Uh, gentle. It's gentle. Uh, what do you? What did you guys think of uh, Bedknobs and Broomsticks? Had you seen it before? Do you want to go first, Rhea? Because I don't think you've said a word yet. <laughs> it's fine, I don't mind. I was just, I was like, I've not prepared this much about the film that I chose. In fact, I've come into this with no notes purposefully, because normally I write pages and pages of notes and then ignore them. And now I'm slightly panicked that <laughs> for once I'm like, I think I should have done some notes. <laughs> rather just enjoyed watching the film. Um, so I remember Bed Knobs and Broomsticks from being a kid. Um, and it wasn't a film we had in our house. We watched Mary Poppins. Bedknobs and Broomsticks was one of my neighbours, and I was friends with the with the children, and they loved it. Like their mum was like a Disney, a hardcore Disney fan, and they just had every single Disney film as soon as it came out. Like every weekend, they would watch one on the Saturday and one on the Sunday. And so I remember seeing Bedknobs and Broomsticks around theirs. I didn't like it when I was a kid. Um, I was just kind of did think it was a bit of a crappy Mary Poppins. Um, 
I think it has some issues watching it now. I think, I mean, we watched the longer version, uh, Mike, Megan and I. (laughs) <laughs> just a longer version and I was a bit by the end like okay there is a lot that could have been cut out of this the scene where they're playing soccer football thanks we're in England um was I was like why is this happening I need this to end it is going on for like 45 minutes or something I genuinely was like this is never ending but the rest of it's like really charming hmm despite the sexism, despite the fact that there are Nazis in a Disney film. Um, also, I appreciate how they are the shittest Nazis ever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Awful. Like, the worst Nazis. I was like, yes, down with the Nazis, obviously. Um, it's a weird film. I like. I know you're, I know you're trying to claim the Dan, mm. Spider Dan, mm. I choose weird things, mm-hmm. but I think it's more charming than weird. Charlie, you said about the child actors. Charlie, no time for that kid. Which one's Charlie? The, oldest, the, the older, older brother. Older, older oh, brother. he's a fucking yeah. prick. Yeah. <laughs> like I was like, he's I don't annoying. Know who cast uh, this kid or thought that this would be a good character to have? But I literally cannot cast stand Dick him. Dick Van Dyke, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. You're like you know, Dick Van Dyke was so good in Mary Poppins. Let's do this. Like, kid oh, or no. something. Like I was that, like, oh, that's a convincing it, Cockney accent you've got there. And every time he spoke and was on the screen, I was just like, oh, my God, somebody needs to kick this kid out. Um, that's the polite thing I was thinking. Turn him into a rabbit child. That was the best Turn part. him into a rabbit, yeah. I love the um, rabbit effects. I love right. the rabbit effects. I loved the bed travelling mm. and, like, the weird sort of, like, 60s, 70s sort of, like, colour flashing stuff. I just absolutely loved that. I thought it would, you know, and I think that all lends to the charm. I think, hmm. I think the mix of animation and real life didn't really work as well as Mary Poppins, and you can tell that they didn't love this film as much as Mary Poppins. Um, stop adjusting the chair, Mike. I want to see you slowly sink down. Come on, <laughs> I've just said to him to just stop doing it because he's just going to keep falling down. <laughs> Sorry. Just sit on your legs. Do something I like that. I did think about getting a cushion or something, but I won't. I don't want to. I've already disrupted when I was I'll buy, I'll get, oh, God, You've just got to make it about you, haven't you? <laughs> I do. Um, yeah, you know, I don't think it works as well. But I also think that's looking at it from 2023, yeah. you know. Mm, like, sure. I remember as a kid thinking it was really magical, you know. Mm. And when they're under the ocean and all of that sort of stuff, that was the sequence that I liked the most. And if that was on when I was around my friend's house, that would be the sequence I'd engage with. But, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, the I'm laughing at Mike because it is amazing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but the yeah, I, I I would say it was my least favorite out of these four, but not in a bad way. Mm. Not because I hated it. Not like when we watched like the actual terrible films. Um, <laughs> 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 you know, this was enjoyable, if not a tad over long. Mm. And I felt sad that it hadn't had much, as much love as Mary Poppins. Mm. I mean. Angela Lansbury, just, oh my gosh, just wonderful. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. wonderful in this film. Mm. It's like, you forget because you've got Angela Lansbury in your head as who she is as well. You forget like how just like charming and charismatic she's. Although, you know, that is funny enough what works in her later roles. But yeah. like, I just thought she was just, and I love the way she talks to the kids and she's so mean to them to start with. <laughs> <laughs> loved it it's like we need more female protagonists who are just mean to children because they're ruining her witchcraft (laughs) megan hello um i love this film this is one i i really really like this film i i used to watch this film a lot when i was younger and when i think of angela lansbury i think of bed knobs and broomsticks um or i think of jessica fletcher but i used to watch that on like reruns when I was living in Italy. <laughs> so Murder She Wrote. There you go. You just said the character name, so American listeners will be like, who on earth is that? Jessica Fletcher. They'll know they'll know Jessica. Yeah. Fletcher. Yeah, they know Jessica Fletcher. I didn't. didn't they? Yeah, right. It's, yeah, an well... Ameri- it's an American show. Yeah. yeah. Is it? But she yeah. she's British though, isn't she? She is, yeah, but the show isn't. Yeah. Set set in America. Yeah. That explains why I probably haven't seen it. Jessica oh, Fletcher. Wow. Oh, have, you, have you seen Murder She Wrote? 
Sit your ass down, Mike. No, sit, I think I've... Sit yourself even lower down I, than you I've... already are. I've seen bits and pieces, and just like I've seen bits and pieces of like, oh, was it Midsummer Murders? All those kind of things that were on in the daytime about villages and people murder. dying. <laughs> just murder. murder. In general. Anything just, with murder like, in the title. Touch of Frost is another one. Like, I've seen them all in bits and pieces. Yeah, but... In various ways. Yeah. But, and, yeah. But I, I, I grew up watching this movie. Um, yeah. So bobbing along is like a song that always brings back like nostalgic things that and portobello road so before yeah. portobello road came on i was going portobello no, no, no. road and i was singing it and mike was like why do you keep saying that and i was like you'll find out because he'd not seen the film and i was like you'll find out yeah. and he's like yeah but why he was like why are you talking about a mushroom and i was like i'm talking about portobello road and i was like the road in london <laughs> the massive road that has a big market on it that you will see in this film very shortly portobello road it's and then my mushroom. brother <laughs> yeah and then my brother rang me um about what i can't remember but i was like oh yeah oh, we're watching bed knobs and broomsticks and then immediately he went portobello road <laughs> and mike could hear him in the background and he started laughing i was like come on mike sort it out it's like it's Portobello Road. Yeah. He'd never heard of the market in London or the road in general, wow. which I thought was pretty strange. I thought that's where you'd buy mushrooms from. <laughs> it's the only that was my joke. Only Portobello mushrooms. Buy a Portobello Road. <laughs> yeah, maybe they used to grow them there. I don't know. Portobello Road is where you can buy mushrooms. That's, <laughs> the, end of, that's the end of the song. That's it. That's it. Well, it'd be a lot better if that was the end of the song. <laughs> yeah. No, I I like this film. I think, but I. I I think because we watched the longer version, obviously it does feel longer. Yeah. Um, and I think I also fell asleep at parts, didn't I? I got snoozy. <laughs> yeah. But no, I mean, it is it is a oh, film about a bed, so so yeah. even you've seen people <laughs> get in the bed. I can understand why someone would fall asleep. Yeah, but you know, I'm with Rhea. I find the eldest kid really, really, really irritating. Um, he's just very. <laughs> arrogant my favorite bit it's not my actual favorite bit but it is now my favorite bit because of watching it with mike is the whole portobello road scene where they're at the market and there's just a really long fucking dance off between loads of different yes. nationalities love it. love it and mike was like are they still at the market and i was like yeah and then he was like is that guy supposed to still be playing the piano? <laughs> it's like started the sound inside of the show in the film, and then it stopped it. And then there were other instruments, but you couldn't see them playing. And he was really. I saw all the people pick. I was like, okay, they've got those four instruments there. I can see. And then there were loads of other instruments, but then people playing instruments were dropping the instruments to dance. And I was like, okay, but the music's still playing. And everyone's dancing really, really aggressively. I've seen one for a very And long I don't day. know why, because this is a market where people are selling things, but they're having multiple dance offs. And I don't know why. And all the characters were just walking around like <laughs> in disarray as to all this dancing going on. And they're like trying to buy things, I think. And I'm like, what's happening? He started all this. My favorite thing about this whole scene as well is that whatever her name is, Engeltine, which Mike also got e irate. Egl Eglantine. Egl Eglantine. Eglantine. Because Mike thought it was a stupid name and got angry about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but my my thing in that scene is that she's looking for the other half of the book. Yeah, she's looking at books that are completely different shapes and sizes. Yeah. You've got half and like, of the book, and like full full books as well. Yeah. Like, like half yeah. the book. Oh, you I'm know what your book here. looks like. Why are you it's looking at this massive encyclopedia? Well, I wonder if this has got the answers in. It's like made of like like animal skin oh. falling apart of the pages. Like, um, but yeah, I love this film. It makes me very happy. Okay, so I'm 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 rating it lower than both of you guys. I don't think it's bad. I think it's better than Mary Poppins, but I don't actually like Ooh, Mary Poppins. Oh very much. wow! Okay, I'm oh I'm I'm God. doing what Strong Jack words. does about Forrest Gump. I think Mary Poppins is horrendously overrated. Um, I watched it a bit when I was a kid, and I was like, mm. yeah, it's all right. But a spoonful of sugar. The, then I watched it about. Down, I haven't watched it with you, have I? Was, We've never seen Mary no. Poppins. Today. So I watched it before Megan for the first time since I was a kid, and I was mm. like. This film is not actually that good. Mary Poppins is actually really mean and insufferable for most of the film. It's horrendously misogynistic and is a controversial it's thing. Got the suffragettes in it, mate. At least half the songs are bad. <laughs> At least half of them. There's a couple of bangers, don't get me wrong. Super oh. Califragilistic Califra 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 is genuinely a terrible song. What about I Love to Laugh? Ha 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 ha. God, and Dick Van Dyke oh, is so God. unbearable. And oh, every I do, scene I do hate laughs I to laugh for yeah, it's, ever. it's a shit song. So I'm not a fan <laughs> so of Mary Poppins. I'm, 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 I am somewhat with you on that, on that, Mike. I think the sequences by themselves are quite good. Agreed. Like, like, Animation-wise, you know, phenomenal. Animation, great. And acting-wise, like, Bar Dick Van Dyke is actually really good yeah. as well. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, like the dancing, everything. But like 
it's just a, a series of random shit happening. There's no yeah. like through line. Like with this, there is a through line. They, they have to find the spell. They have to do this. I mean, I would say the through line is very flimsy. In yeah. this one, I agree they're yeah. both very but, flimsy. But it's, I was agreeing Mary Poppins is. I was like, like, no, no, this is... like, oh, this has got a through line. I'm no, like, I don't agree on that point. I think, I, they're I, both... I think it's a stronger through line than, oh, now the kids are going to behave, I guess, at the end. I mean, I this isn't about Mary Poppins. I mean, that's a separate. No. You need to do a clone boards of Mary Poppins and oh, Bedlam. That'd be a good oh, one. God. Um, nice long. They're both very long films, unnecessarily so. Loads of musical numbers, and only about three of the songs are actually good. Uh, both of them. Um, but I will <laughs> say one song that surprised me that I really, really liked. I wouldn't listen to it because the musical style I'm not as much of a fan of. But lyrically, the age of eleven and twelve of not mm. believing. That's so clever, and I've not really heard anyone mention that before. And I was thinking about. it. I was like, that's. When I was that age, that's exactly when I started questioning loads of different things and religion and are aliens real and ghosts and, you know, all these kind of stuff. And then being really certain on things I knew so little about. Like I read three pages in the book and I was like, I know everything about UFOs now, guys. I, I know if you talk about it, I'll insert myself into the conversation and talk like I know when I don't. And so when I saw the kid doing it in the song, I was like, that's really good, actually. Um, and then the Portobello song went on forever. And every time you think he was going to finish, Portobello. it was like... <laughs> and he's like gonna finish and then he does it again you're like oh, okay so and then they had these random music scenes which, as i said i've already voiced my opinion on those which i wasn't as much of a fan of the mm. oldest kid is unbearable and the best part is when he's a rabbit bruce forsyth was great love it um the cartoon football was horrendous Thanks to me you don't yeah, recognize it, it. Did you know did you know you know what i noticed with the cartoon football you know when it pops mm. and it's in and it's under the goal they've gone it's gone he blows it mm. through the goal to win it turns when it's popped it turns into like an american football oh if you go wow. back and if you go back and have a look, really? it has that one massive single stitch thing going through. Oh, huh. that's like an, interesting. So I don't know if maybe they were like because they go, ah, oh, it's soccer, and it's like, uh, I've, the, I've played soccer. The, the voice that whole of thing. Every, as soon as they went in there, that was the worst pit of the film. I was like, <laughs> up, up to the point, I was like, this is weird, <laughs> but I'm like... okay with it because I like the animation. I like a lot of these things. Mm. Oh, with can... the football game, here's my big thing. Before Megan says something about it, my big thing which drove me mad: the whole game of football. Okay. Very few footsteps, but all the other things had sound effects that didn't match anything that was happening. So it's like a kick, and instead of being like a, doof, it was like a, and you're like, okay. And then the footsteps, and people running, and there's just no music or any sound of just people just kind of running, and all you can hear is the ball being kicked. And then they would turn, and then you could hear the footsteps. And it was, it sounded like the sound design on that scene was only half finished, and it was driving me up the wall. And I was like, this game is going on forever, <laughs> and there's no footstep sounds or grass crinkling or anything. But you've got these whizzy sound effects. It sounds like someone's got the files confused. So that was bothering me. I was asleep at that point. You were. Um, Mike, when the... It's a, is it a lion or a tiger? It's a lion. Bears, lion. lion, yeah. Lion. What? I said on bears or Mike. Oh, right. Dan mentioned it was um, the Yeah, when the lion came out, he was like, that's the one from um robin hood and i was like no it fucking isn't because i literally had this whole discussion with mike when we watched robin hood mm. and the lion came out i was like i'm pretty sure that's the lion from bed knobs and broomsticks and then i looked it up and it wasn't exactly the same and then he said yeah. the same fucking thing when we watched bed knobs and broomsticks i was like we've had this conversation <laughs> but animation wise it is the same line. I, I will i will say i i think mike is on on somewhat the right lines i think they've reused animation for yeah that's what yeah. i said when we watched yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you saw yeah. when we when we watched look, Robin Hood the first time, Megan I was said, like, "That looks from, like the lion from Bed Knobs and Bruce." And we looked it up, and Bed Knobs, I think it was. No, I think Robin. I think Robin Hood think was the most was, criticized one because that stole right. loads of animation from elsewhere. I think maybe, maybe it was either way around. Then maybe yeah. Robin Hood stole from this. I'm not sure. Like, but Bed Knobs did all like, the other. almost like because it's only because we watch Robin Hood so recently, and I'm like, yeah. "Yep, that's the he does the same hit, he does the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's the same, the same swagger, the same kind of you know. Obviously, the vocal performances are different, and some of the designs are different of the characters. But why does the king talk like a pirate? Is he meant well, to be this, a lion? This is the whole thing that annoyed me about the football thing. First of all, calling it soccer. And I was like, I'm a grown woman. I don't know why I'm getting so wound up about this film, this particular scene in this film. But it went on forever. The sound design on the lion was unbelievably shit and echoey and faint and then loud at other points. I, mean, I don't know who was doing the voice work. I'm sorry, because voice work is is really difficult. And I'm sure you were very good at your job, gentlemen, whoever did it. But you were doing a shit job on this one. And I feel like they just chucked you in a studio and just said, here's some lines, say them. Like, there was nothing in it. There was just, like, 
nothing in it and it's like they barely it's like they recorded it on a tin can and somebody had a string and had it at the other end and put it against a microphone drive me nuts and then when old fella man magical man magician man um i've forgotten his name because i'm all annoyed um what a bella road guy yeah when he's the, the, the bookmaker guy that no, guy. no, the ref, uh, Professor Brown, Dr. Brown, Professor Brown, Brown, Amelia Professor Brown, Brown. Brown. Yeah. when yeah. he's like refereeing, just move out the fucking way, mate. They're too <laughs> yeah. fucking D. Yeah. Why are you standing in the same spot and letting them run you over? Which felt like happened about 10 fucking times. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh that. my God. And then he's reaching for the little medallion. I was like, oh my God. Just take a step back, mate. They're too D. Just take a step back. Just or step forward, just I know it's just like also, why is I, this going on for so long? And, and when I the just, lion keeps saying it. like when the lion kept saying move it around, move oh, it around, I'm no. like, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> I don't know what you mean by are you talking about the game or you're trying to get people to them to move <laughs> it around? Because or... your body's all broken, move it around, yeah. shake move it off. Around. Is that what you're trying I'm to like, say? I have no idea. So are you saying like man on, man on, or, or any other oh, football I terms I don't it. fucking understand? Um yeah, I, I just, yeah, it's not for me. I'm not a sports fan, so that sequence wasn't for me either. I do want to clarify this film. I did enjoy it. I thought it was mm. good. Yeah. I think because we watched the long version, I think the long version sure. hurts it. And I think that the whole football animal scene is atrocious should be pulled out. Yeah. And then the Portobello robot should be pulled out. And Megan spotted. No, no, sorry, I said that wrong. The Portobello scene should be shortened. Kind of I like parts of it. There's How about... are they going to meet Professor Brown but... if they don't go to yeah, Portobello yeah, that, that, that bit's fine. <laughs> Professor Brown as a character is quite mm. funny. You know, a port... Yeah. Like the... the I love the scene where she's like saying, oh yeah, I performed the spells. And he's like, what? It's yeah. like, I basically made them up. And she's like, oh, I've done that. She does stuff. And he's like, like that's such a clever plot device, mm. like a fake magician inadvertently making a real witch kind of yeah. learn how to use her power. I thought that was so clever. But Megan noticed something at Portobello Road. That the steel pans, completely out of tune. Oh, oh my God. And she's played oh steel pans my God. in a band. Of things. That was oh, absolutely yeah, horrendous. First when she's put all, out to me, I was like, oh, now I can't. First of all, they were out of tune. Secondly, they weren't even playing them at the same time. <laughs> they were just batting. They're absolutely fucking battering these steel pans. They're some of the only instruments that were actually seemingly recorded yeah. on, on the scene. So but they were like, just like the only part of the recording inside notes. is bad. Just put generic. Still it's like it's gone. like they were trying to like play the guitar pretend, but with a guitar, if it's electric, it doesn't make a sound. Steel pans, if you hit them, they're made out of fucking steel. They're going to make a sound. That's the point of them. They, it was so horrible. It was an absolute clusterfuck for my brain. <laughs> as not only someone who plays musical instruments, but as someone who used to play the fucking steel pans, it was horrendous. There's one word that will calm you down. Brighton! <laughs> Brown! <laughs> <Mr>. <laughs> Professor Brown was talking about loads of different places mm. in the UK at one Blackpool. point. Blackpool, he mentioned Blackpool. He mentioned yeah. Blackpool, and, and in Bath. that sequence, he right he bursts out Brighton. Really? He's like, he's like Blackpool, Bath, Brighton! <laughs> and it cracked me up so much, I couldn't stop saying it. I was like, Megan, where should we go? Should we go to Brighton? And it was, <laughs> if you rewatch that scene, he's so calm with everything else. Let's go to Bath, let's go to Blackpool, Brighton! As he walks down the stairs as well, and he's oh. like so, he looks surprised as he says it. And it's like... It was great. And it just continues going. And I was like, that that alone was amazing. I don't think it was meant to be like that. <laughs> There's lots of silly moments in this that I, I thought was so fun in so many ways. I Even like the Portobello <laughs> stuff that was random. What? I was like, I, I like I liked the bit where the bookmakers like I need that other side of the spell I need that other part you've got that like I'll be honest there's some there's some real holes in this if you pull at the thread yeah. like oh yes how the how the fuck does the storybook work how the fuck are they in another world but they're not in another world with Nabumbu. Um, but I love the I bit where the bookmakers, like, the bookmakers, like, um, I'm not going to give you my book, and it's like, not bloody likely. And and, the, and then the bookmaker just opens up and he gets out the biggest fucking nice. knife, and he's like, he's like, I'm going to stab that kid. I'm just going, I'm going to stab him. He doesn't give this children's book. I'm going to fucking stab. Him. And then Bruce Forsyth's like, no, nah, I'd like to use my own, you know. <laughs> Um, I was just like, I was like, just the price me. is right. And like, even the even the Nazis at the end of the film are not as evil as that guy with the giant <laughs> I knife. I loved it. I loved it so much. I was like, I did not remember this bit of the film at all. Like, I remember her meeting him and him being a shyster and all of this sort mm. of stuff. And um, and then I don't. I was like, why is so why is old Brucey hanging around, being weird and being like, watches? You want some watches? And then he pulls out a knife. I was like, what's happening? <laughs> 
this is the darkest bookmaker. Like I have a lot of faith in people who make books and like uh, and librarians and bookstore owners and stuff like that. I'm, I think they're the best people, right? They want to share books with people. Not this fucking fella getting like this dodgy East End guy going around with his knife going, oh, he wants to have a meeting with you. Can I stab <laughs> you? Out of the knife, I was like, what am I watching? Like, he's just like, he's going to butcher this entire like found family for this one part of the book. It was, I was like, this is the story I want to see. I want to see this evil bookmaker man just being like, go on, bro, <laughs> see, go, go shift some people. Like, <laughs> but it did feel like about five different stories they kind of oh, ran yeah, together. Absolutely. Like, absolutely. The first part, when I said to Megan, we first started watching this, because I've seen I think I saw Bread Knobs and Broomstick. Bed Knobs and Broomstick. <laughs> Bread Knobs. That's a different <laughs> film. Um, that's Bake Off After Dark. Sorry. Um, when I saw this film years ago, I've, I remember bits and pieces. I remember bobbing around. I remember the cool animation and I remember parts of the end. Um, but when I watched it and it was the evacuation story, I was like, oh, I didn't realize they're going to go so deep into this found family evacuation stuff. And what did you say? You were like, it's not about that at all. And no. I was like, really? And I was, I was like, like, yeah, oh cool. yeah, Mike, because I didn't realise he was like, when's the say? I was like, during the war. And he was like, is that of any relevance? I was like, not really. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, I thought the old evacuation thing I didn't want to say, I didn't want to say not until later, like, because obviously they do come back. Good night, but, Mr. Yeah. Tom kind of vibes. I was like, maybe mm. it's going to be not quite that dark, but like, maybe it's going to have some shit. nice little things there. Railway children. Yeah. 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 And it's like, oh no, that's just a bit, to kind of launch off and i was like mm. they could have used he was anything. like why he was like why and i was like it's to get them into the town mike i was like they're there <laughs> yeah, yeah. i was like they're now together yeah. as a family that's it that's it <laughs> it's just it, it's a very bizarre choice but it, it it just feels like lots of these things it felt like they had like deleted scenes which you did say from mary poppins mm, yeah, yeah. did. they had like a collection of deleted scenes from various films or like random ideas and they were like if we're going to test out this animation let's just shove them all together and it's just weird how much actually lands but there's just this film has so many plot holes. One of them is when she demands she needs an inanimate object to bring to life. And of every inanimate object <laughs> in her giant room of inanimate objects, she goes, You know what I want? Your shoes, Mr. Brown. Not my <laughs> shoes or <laughs> anyone else's when she's shoes. Doing the or even the children stuff. who don't mind being barefoot. I want your shoes specifically, and no other animated object will work. And I'm like, is this a joke? This she stuff is quite She fancies him and wants no yeah. shoe size. <clears throat> she, she, she's got a foot fetish. That's what it is. <laughs> she's really... Original Tarantino. Mm, exactly. <laughs> she's like, oh. she's like, mm, mm. <laughs> But then she'd be like, it, the only, man for me. it only works if you're barefoot on the ground or draw like a pentagram in like cream or something. <laughs> One other thing... Oh. Go, no, go on, Megan. Go on. I was, if mine was talking about the inanimate objects is... Is the knob itself like the actual like bed knob? Right. <laughs> um, is why why did they choose such a big thing? Like he was like <laughs> he was like picking things out of his pockets, and he was like, "Oh yeah, I've got this knob." I was like, "How could you forget that you've got that? It's fucking <laughs> huge." Do you and know also, what drives me nuts about it? It would take him so long to screw it onto the fucking bed, and I was like, "Even to get out of his pocket, an emergency, and you've got this fucking <laughs> seven year old." But there is when the king's running towards him, isn't and it? And then when he's mm. tapping it, and I was like, tapping, do it faster. I was like, what is I mean, wrong with One quarter people? turn to the left. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't even look like he turned it. It didn't even look like he turned He just ran his finger around it. That's all he did. All and the, also, all... how do you know if it's a quarter turn? I don't know. It's so annoying. Also, when he's like picking stuff out, he's like, I've got this, got a bit of string, I've got some broken glass. I'm like, what are you doing with broken glass in your pocket, you child? <laughs> and also, like those this, wartime the, games. These wartime, these wartime <laughs> kids, these wartime kids, you know, blitz kids, they're they're coming into and you know, Eglantine's accepted them, you know, she's not happy about it. She brings them into the house and they're like, Oh, what would you like for dinner? And you're like, bangers and mash you were being rationed you little prick you, you can't just come in and just go bangers and mash fuck you fuck you think of the war effort you yeah prick. you you little prick okay <laughs> i think that's where we end bed knobs and broomsticks are you yeah, taking us gonna, next are you taking get... us on then Ria? i can, I can take us next i think we need to move on because now we're all just being mean about kids yeah, sure. <laughs> they're older than we are now they're in like their 70 they can handle yeah. it or maybe they can't sorry uh... <laughs> we, we can push them over and steal their knob <laughs> oh, excuse me oh dear uh, right. so yes we'll go, let's go on to my choice then let's mm. move it on 
I chose one of, I genuinely think, the best superhero films, <laughs> especially compared to, compared to some of Marvel's recent offerings, okay, and especially okay, compared to enough. all of DC's offerings, apart from like, right. Wonder Woman. <laughs> uh, uh, 2005, Sky High. Great film. I just, as soon as Megan chose my pick that I wanted, and as soon as I then spent our chat saying every other film, and everybody went, oh, actually, that would be good for this category. I was like, okay, Sky High, done. Great film, great romp, great superhero romp. Teenagers, they go to, they're, they're the children of superheroes. Superheroes are just a thing, everyday thing. They have their superhero identity and their secret identity. Their children go to what is it? High school. What is it called in America? It's called Sky High. Yeah, fucking hell. Um, <laughs> they go to a special superhero high school and they're sorted into either heroes or sidekicks. And we follow Will Stronghold and his group of friends. He doesn't have any powers to start with, so he's made a sidekick. And then he gets all these powers. Uh, he has all the teenage things where he gets bonus over hot teenage girls. Um his best friend uh, fancies Fa- him. Family friendly Disney film. Though. Family friendly. Uh, his best friend fancies him, but he doesn't. He doesn't get it. He doesn't understand it. She's just his friend, and but then he eventually gets powers and beats the bad baddie, and it's just great. Kurt Russell, absolutely amazing in this film. Mm-hmm. What fun! Everybody's just having fun in this film. That's why I enjoy it so much. It's just sort of like we're doing a superhero film for tweens. Let's go and have some fun with it. It's, you know, trying to do all the high school stuff. War and Peace, best superhero name. Love it so much because his mum is a superhero. His dad was a villain. And so I'm not going to explain his name. You're all, you're all intelligent. You get it. Write it um, down if you don't get Dostoyevsky. it. Dostoevsky. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just fun. Like, I remember the first time I saw this, I actually saw it with Jack. Uh, from Back to the Filmography, and because he's my brother, and we what? watched it when we <laughs> when we lived together so years and years Twist. and years ago, and we just had a great time watching it. It is one that when I see it pop up, um, if it was like a Saturday or Sunday and on TV on terrestrial TV, I'd be like, oh, let's just put it on and watch it, and then revisiting it back now on Disney Plus, just just so much fun. I just really enjoyed it. I feel like it's my favorite thing. It knows what it's doing. It has fun with it, but also takes it seriously. You know, it doesn't speak down to young teenagers or anything like that. And it just, I don't know, I just thought it was just real fun. Does everybody else think? Can I jump in just because I have a line I want to quote and I don't want anyone else to quote before me because I think it's that good. And I want to take some amount of credit, which is the when the, I think, uh, the sidekick teacher is man boy or something. I can't remember what his name Mr. is. Mr. Boy. Mr. Mr. Boy. Mr. Boy. There you go, him. Yeah. When they're doing the citizen uh, saving test, which is amazing, and they go, remember when we used to use real citizens? <laughs> yeah. And it's just a throwaway <laughs> line that a cat doesn't dwell on it at all. And I, I cracked And the other up. guy is like, oh, oh yeah. 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 <laughs> it's like, it's so good. And it just cuts, and it's like kids wouldn't even really process it, but I'm like, that really fucks. <laughs> like in a really funny way. And I think the best part about this movie is it's a very much in certain ways to offend Jack again um, is it's got what Shrek has to quite a degree where I feel like a lot of teenagers would watch this and not really enjoy it but I think that young kids and adults would love it because it's got these two lines Mm. of humour going on that work Mm. really well together and I think that if I watched this because I'd never seen this before I I think I recognise the logo vaguely but um, I thought it would be more and less cheesy than it actually was in the best ways Um, but like I think that if I watched this as a teenager, I would have hated it because it kind of signifies all the, the happy stuff instead of the edgy dark stuff that I want from Dark Knight. You know, that kind of thing. And so I just think it it lands really, really well. And obviously the cast is amazing. You know, Mary yeah. Elizabeth Winstead, I adore. You know, in anything she's in, she's absolutely fantastic. Um, and also check out her music friend whenever she comes up. Got a Girl is an album she did. And it's, it's amazing. Um, but also, Juicy Bruce is in it. It's what my brother calls him. Bruce Campbell. Yeah. And I was like, anytime he's in anything, I just love it. He he put he really puts it all into it. He's not the best actor in the world, but he really tries hard and he has so much fun. And you know, there's little moments in this, and you're like, so why is the PE teacher the be all and end all of who ranks what in this odd segregated society? I'm sorry, how high is this bridge in this bus they have to fall off to be above the clouds to then activate the wings? I 
they're, they're little nitpicks you could pull, but it's such a fun, fast moving film. And it's got quite a lot of heart. And for a film that was made like just after sort of X-Men and the uh, Tobey Maguire first Spider-Man movie being made around that time, the quality of it, it there's bits every now and then you're a bit like, yeah, but for th- when it was made, you're like, this is actually really like people put a lot of effort into this. And I'm genuinely really surprised. Like of all these films, although I think my pick is a good contender, I think this is the best underrated film because especially now, I think this would, this almost has a kind of chance. If something on TikTok record, someone on TikTok yeah, yeah. who's influencer recorded mm. a part of this, or it went on to, I know it's on Disney plus, so it wouldn't, but it went on to Netflix or something, you know, when something goes on Netflix, suddenly all the tweens are into it. That, I think if that happened, this film could really, because it takes the mix so well before the MC or anything was even a thing. And I just, I just, I thought in the first 15 minutes, the film was going to suck, to be honest with you. I was like, this is going to be ultra tween cheese and it's going to be too much. But because it really feels like, as you say, Rhea, it doesn't treat you like an idiot. And it's like, oh, there's a few bits here that you kind of, you know. I just thought it, it had every kind of layer of humor, I think, for a film like that. What do you think, Megan? Sorry. <laughs> just verbally waterboarded everyone. It's right. I liked it. I, I didn't know anything about it. Um, I didn't even know that it was about superheroes until like the first like starting bit. And then I was like, oh, sky high. I was like, okay, there we go. I get it. Um, but yeah, no, I, I really enjoyed this film. Um, I'm surprised I've not heard of it before. Mm. Um, but I yeah, I really, really liked it. Although it was very predictable. It was very predictable. Yeah, but yeah. I, I kind of watching it again, I was like, I mean, obviously I'd seen it before quite a few times, so I knew what was going to happen. But I kind of liked the predictability of it. You know, like Megan's pick, we all know what's going to happen, but how they get there. I do think it's done better in in what we're going to talk about with Megan's pick, but we all know how they're going to get there and getting there's fun. Mm. And, you know, it's not like, the, it's not back to the future. It's not the best written script ever, right? But you're there for the ride and you're enjoying it. And I oh, think team, that's team Wolfson, why... That. <laughs> and I think that's why it works. Well, and I agree with you, Mike. It's cheesy. It's incredibly cheesy. But in a way, just the right amount, like because they know it's cheesy they know what they're doing and I think that's what makes it so fun and I also found I mean don't get me wrong we've still got you know the the main cast is white um and it's Will Stronghold is a white teenage boy and his love interest his two love interests are white teenage girls but the rest of the cast is quite diverse for what I wouldn't expect in this type of film now look they're not like the psychic group of his friends they're not like the most you know (laughs) they're not representing lots of diversity but if you think about films at the time and you think about you know they're just filled with white people and there's the one black character that's the friend I was I was quite surprised watching it again I was like okay it's a bit of a shame they are the sidekicks and they are in the background but it actually feels like if you were going to go to a high school that it's not just filled with conventionally attractive yeah. white people, which I found quite surprising. Um, I do feel the, you know, I agree again with you, Mike, that I think the budget's pretty good, but when it comes to the fight scenes, I was like, yeah. oh, that's <laughs> not aged well visually. <laughs> The rock guy as well. The rock yeah. guy and the giant robot. The giant robot yeah. looked like something out of Flight of the Concords. Yeah. yeah it, I was did, like, it did look like a YouTube video Ooh. or something. I was like... Oh. <laughs> but I was like... I, and I was forgiving of it because I had such a good time watching it. But I was just like... Yeah, like... I completely agree with you. Like, teenagers, late te- late mid to late teens would be like, what is this? It's too happy. It's too colourful. All of this sort of stuff. But I think for the tween market, and this very much feels like what it was for, just like absolutely spot on. Uh, I guess it's my turn then. Um, I have never seen this before, so it was brand new to me. I'm a big superhero fan. Um, I mean, look at the name of my podcast um, alone. <laughs> um, I I really enjoyed it. Uh, I wasn't expecting to. Again, I thought it was going to be a bit twee or a bit cheesy or a bit mm, di- Disney-fied. You know, I, I, do, I do worry when I'm going into these kind of mid-2000 Disney films. I'm like... Eh. 
you know, there's, there's going to be something, I'm Just sure. you wait till you get to Megan's pick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> As in, yeah. not only this pick yeah. here, but our next Disney discussions, which we're yeah. announcing at the end. Oh, yeah. The next sure. one. I think it is, yeah, because Ria's oh, the last yeah, pick. Yeah, I think that, it's your turn, yeah. Get ready to talk about that. Sorry. The, the one I'm dreading, I'm sure. <laughs> 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 So yeah, I did. I did. Um, but I, again, I think the cast is really good. Speaking of Wonder Woman, she is in it. Linda Carter plays mm-hmm. the the headmaster, um, and it's yeah, it's full full of like really good character actors, comedic actors. Kelly Preston's in it, who's fantastic as well as the mum. And yeah, I think I think everyone's great. Again, the the effects aren't great. But I think I think Mike's right. I think some of the more mature throwaway jokes are actually quite hilarious. And if you're not paying attention, you could miss like when he's dropping the car on him and and stuff like that. And you're like, people could die here. But it, I think it's kind of making fun of like X Men and the Harry Potter, where the teachers are constantly putting the kids in danger, yeah. and nobody seems to be like saying or doing anything. It's like, like that. satire, isn't it? Yeah, it's a sat. It's a, that's what it is. It's a superhero satire, and I think the problem is they. It may have come out at the wrong time. I think maybe given given maybe five six years, maybe people would have been open to it. Mm. But I think at this point, we're only just accepting to take superheroes seriously again. We're talking Spider Man, X Men, Blade, um, Daredevil come out. I think Fantastic Four came out the same year. So we're still in that that period where we're they're building their kind of box office steam. And I think something kind of jabbing and making fun of that maybe might not have have gone over Mm. so well, potentially, because we're going, oh, no, no, we like this. We want to see more of this. And we're going to get to our Iron Man's and Dark Knights. I was going to say, Batman Begins, I think, was at the same year as this. Yes. So it's really, this was, as you you say, perfectly just before the kind of Mm. renaissance of really top quality superhero films. You had X-Men and Spider-Man, which were great, but they were seen as isolated because of fantastic mm. four and a couple of others play was yeah. amazing but like yeah it was just before the boom it, it was it was it was after batman and robin where we were sort of taking them seriously again they weren't silly they weren't embarrassing we're we're looking at them in a different light like now we look at them and they can be anything they want they can be a heist film they can be a political thriller all these superhero movies but yeah at this time i think it was they were playing with stuff and again i'm I know all the references they're making, all the, you know, uh, Mr. Boy being like a a shit Robin, you know, I enjoy and 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 him going, does he does he talk about me still? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he never mentioned you. I didn't know you were here. So you know, we had the matching colours and, and everything. He's one of my favourite characters in it. Oh, he's so, so funny. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I think you guys were saying how pretty predictable it was. I predicted that he's not gonna have his powers throughout the film. He's gonna be the loser, he's gonna be you know, downtrodden, he's going to be, you know, he's going to struggle. And then right at the end, just when he needs it, bam, he's going to become who he's supposed to be. But I quite, I, I, I'm I, glad that my expectations there were, were smashed because he gets his powers. And then we have this, oh, he wants to be the popular kid. We get this whole kind of clash and, and that journey, which I quite enjoyed. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm a sucker for like a good X-Men story where there are mutants born with shit powers. <laughs> like 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 you're just a jelly with 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 bones in there like like it or yeah or like you know like Meg your your fingernails grow a little bit longer you know like just really fucking shit because it's not always going to be amazing cool powers and flight and you know energy pro- projection or anything like that it's gonna somebody is gonna get b- to be able to turn into a guinea pig or slime or you know it, it's gonna happen and I I like that and again those and again those that representation. You know, again, the the uh, the commander Kurt Russell's that he's like, they're losers. They're not important. You need to be. There's a lot of pressure on on young Will Stronghold to be as powerful and the Stronghold Three and all this. And there's a lot of expectations he's trying to live up to. Uh, and I like that. You know, that Kurt Russell by the end is actually going. No, these guys, these these guys, we didn't think of the losers. The they're the real heroes because they did it and they don't have the kind of abilities we do and then they've come through the white people have failed but the you know the people of diversity have come through and saved the day and and you know and that's one of the lessons uh, i think throughout the film but yeah i loved it i think all the all the actors are hilarious bruce campbell's great uh you know sidekick um much more enjoyable than the lion screaming i will say that <laughs> the sound design was much better for that um but yeah i, I even like the bus driver again he's he's a he was I great love the bus he driver. was quite wholesome wasn't he i love an underdog yeah. Yeah, and it, it's a good, it's a good wholesome fun film. You've got a little bit of, you know, uh, Danielle Panabaker would go on to be in the Flash, and 
and uh you know kurt russell would go on to be in more marvel films and there's a lot of kind of there's some dna there i quite like the the fact that she's trying to make lemons a bit like eglantine she's trying to turn them into other things but she can only do rabbits and she can't do lemons she can only do apples um but yeah i thought i thought it's really fun really wholesome um and i think you are right i think I think if you're in your kind of cynical teen years, you're not going to get this. You're not going to get on board. But I think tweens and adults will appreciate both sides of it. And I'm glad I saw it when I was older to appreciate Same. Those, those two levels that they're playing with. <laughs> right, let's move on. Who's next? I'll do it. My film is Freaky Friday. But Between the, whom? Um, Lindsay Lohan and Jamie Lee Curtis. It is about a mother and daughter, um, and they oh, they have a very fragmented relationship um, because uh, the mum's getting remarried. The daughter's not very happy about it. I can't really remember their names at the moment. What are their names? Lindsay Lohan and Jamie. <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis. That's what we were referencing them as the whole time. Anna and Tessa. Anna is Lindsay Lohan. Tessa and is Jamie Tess. Lee Curtis. Yeah, so Anna is like a teenage like angst girl um who is in a band she wears like edgy clothing um and tess is like a psychiatrist of some sort Mm -hmm. um but yes they they end up going to a chinese restaurant they have a fortune cookie and the fortune cookie makes them swap bodies so they wake up on a friday that's very freaky and then they've swapped bodies and they're like oh shit we've swapped bodies and so it's about the story of them trying to figure how to go back to their normal bodies because it is the day of Tess's, which is the mum's wedding reception dinner. So it's the day before the wedding. Oh yeah, sorry, the the wedding rehearsal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's the day before the wedding. So they're like, ah, we need to swap bodies back. And it's all about that. Why'd you like it? Why'd you choose it? I I (laughs) admittedly used to watch this film daily, I'm pretty sure, for a while. I used to like put it on in my room when I was like supposed to be like tidying my bedroom um, and I would just put this on in the background. So I, I used to watch this film a lot. I was very obsessed with this film. Did you watch it with Mean Girls? Mean Girls was in the roster. Because they both were at the, around the same time and same director and obviously Lindsay Lohan as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I did the same thing with The Parent Trap as well. Which there, there are certain films... There are, I can't believe you've not seen The Parent Trap. There are certain films that I would just repeatedly have on all the time. Freaky Friday, Mean Girls, Hairspray were, were in my collection of movies that I would want to watch over and over again. But Hairspray, the like the newer version of Hairspray, not the original. You are talking, so I have a set of films that when I'm feeling really sad or I'm really sick, I watch, and you've just named three of the films that mm. are in that list. It's very exciting. Ah, yeah. Bet, I bet Dragon Slayer's in there. No, it, <laughs> it is very much not. And we watched Mean Girls recently as well, didn't we? There's we lots did of similarities. Mean Girls is... Yeah, Mean Girls. Is... Freaky Friday turned 20 like a handful of days mm. ago. Mm. Um, but I don't know. I think for me, this just came out at the right time because obviously if it came out 20 years ago, it came out in uh, 2003. Um, it did, it did. So I I probably wouldn't have watched it straight away. You're like tennis. I would have been yeah nine or ten when this film came out. So I think it got me at the right time. Mm. Um, but I, I I fucking love this movie. I think it's so good, and I think Jamie Lee Curtis and Lindsay Lohan are fucking phenomenal <laughs> in this film. Their acting is just outstanding. Like the fact that their characters within their own characters are great anyway. But then when they do the body swap and they're having to act like the other person, it is it's just outstanding. It's so good. Because yeah, I I'd seen... there are a few cringe bits in this film, but um, yeah. it is it's a fantastic movie. Because I'd seen bits and pieces again of this film. I'd never seen any piece of Sky High, Bed Dogs and Bruce Six. I have definitely seen, but I, when I was really really young, this one I think I avoided because it came out. You know, obviously me and Megan are basically the same age, and I think that when I was a teenager, because that was when I was sort of twelve ish. That was when I stopped watching all were the Disney the, shows. Were you in the age of not believing? I was in the age of not believing. Not believing that a boy would watch girly stuff, even though I used to like I used to like that so Raven, but I would tell anyone about that because that's not cool. So now I was just like, my brother let me watch Predator once, so now I'm an adult. Um, it's that kind of thing. So I, I didn't watch... It's the most adult film ever. <laughs> yeah. The most mature film you've ever seen. <laughs> so um, it was that sort of time, I think, for me. So I never really bothered with it. And obviously... 
again, when I hear, you know, everyone knows the plot of Freaky Friday. You know, there's so many films. Well, I mean, it was a remake as well. There's another. Yeah, there's yeah. another movie that's not there's, as good. There's ton of. There's a ton of like body, four. body swap movies. You, I think, you I think there's them. four Freaky Friday movies. We looked at. No, there's three. Sorry, there's four Star is Born movies. Nope. What a are you four. About? There's a Christmas a Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street. There's four of them. Three Star is Born films. Why is that three relevant Freaky to what Fridays. we're talking about? Because I was thinking of all the films that there's loads of, and I got confused with Freaky Friday being four of them, but there's three of them. Because there's a new one that came out a few years ago that bombed, um, but I've not seen the right. original. But I hadn't seen this one either, to clarify in full, because I was like, I know the plot, I don't need to watch it. I, I haven't seen, I haven't seen any, I hadn't seen any of them, but I knew the the gist. I know yeah. the the idea behind yeah. it. Yeah, but it was it was re- I was really surprised. It gave me Mean Girls vibes a lot, and I love Mean Girls. And I was like, to me, this going as a with a Mean Girls double bill, you could, although the mum does change, obviously, it's like the characters are so similar. You could almost be like. Lindsay Lohan twins at birth. They separated and no one knew. One went off and did Freaky Friday. One went off and did He's Mean just Girls. Just telling the story of the parent trap there, mate. <laughs> you are. Wow. Well, that's why that's even <laughs> someone that's it. not seen the parent trap. You're literally <laughs> selling the film. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, I can see why these three films have worked together because as Megan said, it was just so, there are issues with the film, but I was so pleasantly surprised because I thought it was going to be quite weak, uh, to be honest with you, just because it's, you know what it is and just like anyone who hasn't seen mean girls think probably thinks mean girls can't be as good as everyone says and they're wrong it's very similar to that it was like Freaky Friday, the dialogue's so brilliant so good one thing i loved about it is the stepdad this might be the only film in ages so, especially this so era good. who's just a lovely guy who's really trying and it's just so nice yeah. and it's not like the stepdad's a dick and she's trying to well, make her mum happy it's like no the stepdad's awesome you two are the problem he's yeah. actually awesome. well he gets larry doesn't he he gets angry at the mum because he doesn't want to be made out to be this evil stepfather villain character mm. he wants anna to be able to like him on her own terms it's refreshing it's for great. a step parent mm. story where the step parent is not in the wrong like basically at all and i really liked that element whereas like the story's still about these two strong independent women in very different ways and kind of getting an understanding mm. sympathy and a really important story i think for young people but especially i'd say young women watching with their mums and kind of having that sympathy element but the da- the stepdad is just i've not really seen that before i was just really taken aback by how well how well it kind of how nice it was, I think, how wholesome this film really was, mm. for the most part. Yeah. Um, I I have to I have to agree. I did really, really enjoy this. I did um uh I I, I did have some issues with it. I think um I looking in like I there's this whole kind of fortune cookie thing and Chinese restaurant and some of the the acting and and very strong accents I don't think were required but again I don't think that was the actor's choice I think that was a white producer or director's choice they go oh yeah do it in a stereotypical Chinese accent and it's it because I looked at the original and the original is like it it happens on Friday the 13th so there's Mm -hmm. nothing there's no racial or you know you know eight kind of connections it's just Friday the 13th it's a weird day fuck this has happened brilliant what do we do to reverse it you don't you know there's other body swap things where it's like wishing upon a star or things you don't need to make it so specific but again different times i'll I'll, I'll forgive that but it does kind of crop up a little bit a lot and they keep coming back these characters because that's the the whole premise of the film unfortunately but i think i think the two lead performances you're right they are fantastic like i think jamie lee curtis is is absolutely having a ball but actually i think lindsay lohan being the sensible mum is actually it's a bit i think about it a bit like like rain man um with dustin hoffman you have this wonderful performance he's giving but a lot of people don't talk about tom cruise because he's playing this really obnoxious horrible self-centered brother and then that performance is really fucking good and people overlook it because of, of dustin hoffman's performance but i think it's the same here i think jamie lee curtis is going to absolute town it's like yeah rock and roll you know punk and all this and but then Lindsay Lohan in on the other hand is being the awkward uptight like you know I'm a psychologist and you know and I I thought I thought they were both wonderful it got me so much I was kind of tearing up towards the end I was like during that speech where the and again that they the speech kind of when they swap back, spoilers, they swap back. Oh my god! Um, but they do swap back, and then, but it's during this really passionate speech about becoming a new family and accepting each other and and their flaws and growing and learning uh, and being a a fuller, you know, more, you know, a family basically in so many ways. 
And yeah, I was like, oh, fucking bastards, you got me. You got me right in the fields. <laughs> um, uh, but it, again, it's it's due to the 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 those two key performances. I, I, I think without those two performances, you've not got much of a film, really. And I think they've absolutely cast the right people and they have the chemistry and the, even the arguments. You're like, oh, I've heard these before. And after seeing kind of Lady Bird, I was like, oh, yeah, I can I can see this again. I'll see, I'll see this old, old dynamic. But again, it really works here as well in a, in a totally different, more kind of family-friendly way, if you will. But yeah, I, I loved it. I thought Mark Harmon as the dad was, the stepdad was great. Um, and again, very low-key, very subtle performance. Uh, Chad Michael Murray exists. He was in it um, as as a heartthrob, the One Tree Hill guy. Um, yeah, I forgot that he was a person because he crept up in a lot of like rom coms around that time, didn't he? He's the crush. Isn't he's he? the one in a Cinderella story as well. Is that's yeah, him? Yeah, that's is. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I didn't like he's him. He's super greasy in this though. Like he's he's got like bad skin, long hair, and I'm like. But yeah. you see how old he is as well, and they seems keep... older than he's ever been. And it's like <laughs> she, she's like what sixteen, I think, or something, and yeah. he's like working. He's graduated, so he's at he... least eighteen yeah. or nineteen. Like in the UK, where you know sixteen is the age of consent, having an eighteen-year-old with a sixteen-year-old, it's a bit like. Eh, well, well, you say that, but in, in Sky High, she's a senior, isn't it? Isn't she? And uh, he's Elizabeth a freshman. Win- and he's well, a freshman. those words mean nothing to me. So I thought. So, she was so young, youngest and oldest. It's like in, a so that even it's still well, you've got junior and then you've got well, high school. So yeah, it would. I don't know. I think I think he would probably be like thirteen. Yeah, Ugh, that's worse. So even even and then and then the mum's cool with that. She's like, she's a senior. <laughs> it's like... I guess it is the dynamic that is stereotypical, yeah. and whether or not you know we can't get into this whole debate of this, but you know, older mm-hmm. woman with a younger man is that taking advantage more than an older man a younger woman and it depends on the age and the individuals at hand and it's it's all gross and creepy to clarify i didn't realize that about sky high yeah yeah no no that's that's the same yeah he would be 14 to 15 right and she'd be what 17 bloody hell we're not even talking about this film anymore sorry we're not we're not but anyway well anyway um, i'm going to talk about how much i like freaky friday sorry yeah <laughs> do it, do it. We've moved on from Sky High, and even though that's my pick, I want to talk about Freak Friday. <laughs> okay. Because okay. I love this film. So, as Dan talked about, we recently discussed the film Lady Bird with the wonderful Alison Shelton. Um, and we talked about generational trauma. And isn't it amazing to watch a film about generational trauma between mothers and daughters and it be happy and joyful and not traumatic? For me, it's in the same vein as Barbie. We're going to talk about feminism and the patriarchy and it'd be joyful. And this is what Freaky Friday does. And I love it. And I love it both as... So I watched this when I was in my early 20s. Um, So definitely not in the age bracket, but I will consume any type of film ever, apart from a lot of the ones that Dan recommends, to be fair. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I don't even recommend them for myself. (laughs) And a huge Jamie Lee Curtis and Lindsay Lohan fan. So I was like, when this came, you know, when this was on DVD or whatever, boy, I was like, yeah, I'm going to watch it. Absolutely loved it. I've loved it ever since. Like you, Megan, I've watched it so many times. I can't even count. It's like in a rotation of films of when I'm sad, it makes me feel happy. And I just love how joyful and fun this is, much like Sky High. In fact, like all of the films that we've talked about, this, there has been so much joy in them and this is the one that I feel it the most in and for me it's also how much the two main actresses own their performances which I think is really exceptional I think we don't get to see from women in film and you know Jamie Lee Curtis is actually sensational and the fact that she leans into you know when she first sees her face and she's going oh I look like the crypt keeper and okay. stuff like that you know that's actually really brave of an actress her age to do that. And we don't get to see that on film. Now, Jamie Lee Curtis is, you know, I don't want to objectify anybody, but she is incredibly good looking, like let's all, you know, the fact that she's looking at herself and saying, oh, I look like the crypt kicker. But that is what a teenager feels, you know, that is what a 15, 16 year old is going to feel when they're suddenly looking like an incredibly beautiful older woman. And she gets to say that on screen and she gets to have the most fun, which is really lovely. But it is Lindsay Lohan who just completely blows you out of the water with this film. The the absolute way she controls both her performances 
is unbelievable. And I again, I think we really rarely get to see it. When she's Anna, young Anna, true Anna as such, I rem- she reminds me of being that age and the pure emotion of absolutely everything is why I would never go back to being a teenager because it is horrendous. And, you know, it's, again, my, my favourite thing, she's trying to find herself. She's trying to figure out who she is. She kind of already has, but nobody around her, her parents, the people that she trusts and love, her dad has just died a few years ago. Nobody around her, apart from her stepdad, to be stepdad, funny enough, sees her for who she is. Her her brother doesn't, her mum doesn't, her mum doesn't, her dad's died. And she's found this core group of friends and, and there's like other chaotic things happening in her life at school and her mum's not listening to it. It's all she wants. She wants her mum to listen to it. She wants her mum to like her music and listen to her and give her some privacy and respect. That's all she fucking wants. Like, and that's, and she's not getting any of that from around her. And then by the end of the film, she is, she's, you know, she's just being listened to because her mum has had to experience what her everyday life is, how being a teenager you are ignored. Nobody believes you. Even when you're smart like Anna is, when she's at school and she's answering questions correctly, she's so tuned in. A teacher. In to the, a teacher, mm. right? Oh, I hate him. He's, <laughs> He's like horrible. Umbridge and Harry Potter. He's right? the worst. He's so evil. And it's like, and what I love about him is how much her friends respect her and look at her as a leader, but she's not there being like, oh, you know, I'm I'm a leader, look at me, take on the bullies and all this sort of stuff, because she is bullied and all this sort of stuff. They just respect her because they love her who she is and for who she is, and she's talented. And I was just like, you don't get to see teenagers like that on screen. Girls, teenagers like that on screen. You know, we we get dark, complicated teenage boy stories. And this is a complicated teenage girl story. It just happens to be joyful and colourful again, like, you know, sky high and and what we're going to talk about with holes. And and I was just like, imagine, I wasn't a teenage girl watching this. Imagine being a teenage girl and watching it like Megan was. Like, I can understand why you were obsessed with it. I can Mm. completely understand it. And just Lindsay Lohan's performance in getting all of that in this film is unbelievable. I mean, I, I love Lindsay Lohan. My other half, Kevin, is obsessed that one day she's going to get an Oscar. And I'm like, I really want that to happen because I think she's an exceptional actress. And I think everything else that's happened around her and her work, I hope as a society, is things that we've learned about and are moving on from. But, you know, fingers crossed for the Lindsay Lohan comeback. But I, you just see it, in, you know, you see it in Mean Girls, you see it in The Parent Trap, you see it in this. Just My Luck, that's another just, one. I love Just My Luck, yeah. which is a terrible film. I know it is, but it's also great. <laughs> but it's got my um, fly in it, so it makes it all better. <laughs> yeah. And I just uh, I just think there's something... I think this is really unique, this film. And I do think it's quite generic. And I do think you can... You know, we all know what's going to happen. Obviously, you're going to switch back and learn about each other and be in each other's shoes and all of that sort of stuff. There's no way this film should be as good as it is. And I, th- and, I, and I do think it's down to the lead performances and I do think it's down to a director who trusts those actress, actresses to bring it onto the screen. And it's exactly what you've all said about the stepdad character. Like, he is my favourite in this. Like, and absolutely fancy him. <laughs> like, I'm like, he is handsome. Handsome, but also because of his whole attitude. I think is just really wonderful and what we're not used to seeing. And so one of the problematic things that we've talked about is the Asian restaurant and it's a mother and daughter and they're arguing and the daughter's been like, oh, stop interfering and all of this sort of stuff. And we were talking about it in our chat and I was like, wouldn't it be so interesting if we didn't have that horrible racial um, Mm. stereotype stuff going on? Hate it, don't like it at all. But that relationship is trying to explore that intergenerational trauma as well. So it's reflecting the two main actresses. So like, I just really wish we didn't have all that horrible ugh, Chinese restaurant mm-hmm. race stuff because it's so great to see that reflect, you know, another layer of that reflected in the film. And I just, the speech at the end and when we touch on throughout the film, what Anna has been through, what she wants from her mum. And we touch on what her mum wants as well. like. 
I, I was talking to you about how her mum's so focused on this wedding, right? Because her, her husband died. And so she's working. She's been raising these two kids. She's met this new man who has like brought love and life back into her life. And she's so focused on this wedding and this wedding being perfect that she's not focusing on what she really needs to focus on, which is her family, which is this man who is so open to accepting her and her family, all of their flaws, because I love they are not a perfect family at all. And he's just there and he's open and he wants to love them and he wants them to love him. And I, and I also love that they're sort of exploring that, that for her, the wedding's so perfect. But what Anna does when she's in her body and when she's making the decisions for her is makes Tess more true to who I think we or, or who Tess was. She's not trying to be this person and the perfection. And I think that's like a whole other layer that I could talk about for ages. We're running out of time. <laughs> I mean, I could just do a podcast about Freaky Friday. Let's just go and do that. Or all of Lindsay Lohan movies. That would be amazing. Just to go exist. through them. Oh, that would yeah. be a good Femme podcast, actually. <laughs> that would, the, tri- it? the trifecta of Lindsay Lohan. I bloody love Lindsay Lohan. Oh, yeah. She's so great. Just, a, she's just so had a baby, great. didn't she? That's no idea. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. a Hallmark Christmas movie. Yeah, I know. She, I think, uh, I think that she... Hallmark Christmas movie is amazing. It's you, absolutely don't amazing. Don't you think all of them are amazing? No, they're terrible, but that uh, one is genuinely one amazing. If, I if mean, I re- it's terrible, but it's amazing. It's <laughs> like the best of that. If if I remember rightly, Lindsay Lohan posted she just have a be- had a baby and you know celebrating. I think she said, uh, "I'm not I'm not a regular mom. I'm a postpartum mom." <laughs> nice. <laughs> but yeah, that was quite clever. So uh, so yeah, no, but um, yeah. Oh, last yeah. thing, because I know it's on my pick next, so I'll talk about holes. But I will just add the note from the brother in the school oh, yeah. that really touched my heart and then when she was like but why why are you so mean to him mm. and he's like it's paraphrasing why are you so mean to him she, he's like i'm not mean i like playing with her it's fun if she knows i feel this way she won't play with me anymore and i was like mm. oh he doesn't yeah. fully understand how emotions work but to a degree he does mm. and it's this kind of thing where he thinks it's a game and she doesn't realize and you see that for me is the pivotal moment of mm. Lindsay it's the cute bit where they're walking yeah. out of the door and they're kicking yeah. each other's bums yeah. with the legs yeah. I, I i i was going to mention that actually i forgot to mention it but i that was that was the moment where i saw Lindsay lohan in jamie yeah. Lee curtis's performance and i was yeah. like the fact that i can see another person within another mm. person yeah that's there's so many layers going on and for, for the actor to be able to not only process that but display that and it to come across through the camera is, is incredible so yeah brilliant you did a good one megan fantastic job thanks thanks everyone so i guess <clears throat> so to my one uh which is the least happy and it's wholesome this film i think but it's a bit of a dark horse holes mm-hmm. because it's one of those films where it i think it's almost the empress new groove of live action films in the sense of when you talk about underrated animated Disney films, Emperor's New Groove is one of the first ones people talk about and a lot of people haven't seen but they peripherally know about. Holes, especially for at least people I know my sort of age, everyone knows of its existence to a degree, but only a select few have kind of seen it, but no one has that much bad to say about it. And it's basically a prison movie, but for but a suitable for all ages. And I... It would be really hard to explain to someone why this film works so well without them having seen it, without spoiling it, because it's it's got so much heart to it and it's got so many layers to it. And, you know, obviously Stanley Yelnat, you know, there's lots of little jokes that are quite funny little things. You know, his name is a palindrome, same forwards as backwards. And you've got Henry Winkler as his dad. He's an inventor who can't... And there's Curse and all this timeline stuff going on. And it's like, you know, a kid goes to a prison away, juvenile camp in air quotes but because he gets framed for stealing some shoes um and then obviously it turns out there's a whole plot line to do with that and things and you're getting these flashbacks of his family of how this curse was given to the family and all of this thing it seems weird and sporadic and things don't really seem to line up and then there's a point about halfway through the movie where just everything starts to line up and then you get it and from that point i think it just wraps itself up so nicely and the fact like my like Shia LaBeouf, although he's nuts, he is a very, very good actor, okay, for, for most films he's in, and especially in these earlier days. And in this film really shows even how Stevens he was days. great, even Stevens, even yeah, those Stevens. kind of things. But Zero, although I don't know, I'm not saying the acting of Zero was top tier, but I think the, the performance that was given worked so well, and the way it was written, 
and you've just got this young kid who everyone calls an idiot, including the the air quotes uh, counselor. Yeah, that guy's a dick. He's horrible to him, and everyone's so mean to him. And then it's about him. It's it's kind of for me. It's really his story and just how Stanley kind of came into his life and did a few things to to change this bad set of luck this kid's had. And every emotional beat when he asks him to help him read, when he eventually spoiler alert gets reunited with his mum at the end, like all those bits were really pulling at my heartstrings. And every thing about Zero, and I was like. I remember enjoying this film so much, but I've only seen it once or twice when I was younger and I never revisited it. And I'm really glad I haven't because I just think this film really blew me away of how mature it is in so many different ways. And then Scorny Weaver popping up. That was amazing. And she's great at everything. So I just, there was just so many things I really enjoyed. My only, there's probably a few criticisms you guys will come with, but my only main criticism I think is that the curse bit, they say it, every five lines of dialogue mm-hmm. for the first half of the film and it's like can you only need to say it twice three times at most and i know there's a whole plot line going about it but the plot line explains itself how it works so that's my only real big criticism of of that film uh, but i really enjoyed it megan this is probably my least favorite of all of them um Why like, is it? what's the key word it was all right i liked it <laughs> but I just thought it was quite convoluted and confusing mm-hmm. at points um, because there was loads of different flashbacks and it didn't necessarily link up to exactly where in the family line it was. And I was like, okay, well, which Yonats is this now? Like, mm-hmm. it didn't make it that clear to me. And then, like, I liked the whole, like, symbolism of, like, the curse being lifted because of him helping Zero, but I also kind of just found that a bit pithy Um, (laughs) but i i enjoyed it i'd never it's not what i was expecting from this film i i'd heard of holes i knew nothing about it um i thought it was okay it was all right which is fair it's i didn't think it was a film that you especially would really connect with i think this makes me sound like i'm insulting you and it makes me sound like a dick but for me i feel like if you watch quite a lot of movies... Megan likes dumb, dumb like, films. No, no, not like that at all. But if you watch a lot of films, like a lot of prison films, a lot of things, I think you can feel there's so much... There's so, a lot... There's a lot of references, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot, that's what I was getting at. I think, I think there's... Because it's a Western, you've got mm. that... They're referencing a lot of Westerns there. And you've got, like, the prison aspect. It's, it's like... Cool Hand Luke meets Unforgiven meets Disney somewhere yeah. in the middle. And all the characters are extreme characters, almost yes, of Western absolutely. characters yeah. in a prison film with kids. Yeah, and they're, and they're playing on the the you kind of knowing and playing. It's like this, like Sky High does. It plays with those stereotypes. We're familiar with the sidekick superheroes. We're familiar with the psych- secret identities and the high school and the way that works. So it's playing fun with that. But yeah, it's very they're making very specific references. And I think if you haven't seen those type of films, then yeah, you would you probably feel a, a little bit left out in some respects. So I can understand. Um, you know, Megan not really getting into it if you've not seen those kind of films and know those kind of tropes from those films. It can it can probably be lost on you a little bit, but um, yeah, no, I I can I can see why it's un- uh, it's not for everybody. Did However, you see I enjoyed it. Had you yeah. seen it before, Dan? Sorry, I had seen it before, okay. and I I think this is my favorite of the bunch. Actually, I think mm-hmm. Mike. Um, again, it's a little bit darker. There's kind of some more kind of adult themes going on you know, destiny and and having all these horrible things go on in your life and trying to, again, that kind of found family aspect and and those connections as well. Uh, Madame Zeroni is is the villain in um, Emperor's New Groove as well. So uh, Yes, yeah, I remember looking that up actually, yeah. Yeah, Eartha mm. Kit. Eartha Kit. Um, and yeah, again, it is a bit, they do hammer home the, the fucking, uh, there's a curse. And like when, when he mentions the name Zeroni, I would have been like, Oh yeah, the curse, Zeroni, Madame Zeroni. Yeah, I know who you are. You relate to Madame Zeroni. Oh, we can break the curse. Like the second he says that, I'm like, why don't you? You've heard the story a million times. You've heard the song a million times. You know, you should know this. You shouldn't just be like, nice to meet you, Mister Zeroni. <laughs> no, you should be like, wait a fuck minute, wait one. Because he sings the Woodpecker second. song, doesn't he? Randomly. Yeah, exactly. Like, and, and he looks at him and he's like, I know that song. I won't mention it. 
I won't say anything. Um, I I really love the the kind of Western aspect. I didn't see that coming with this. I kind of knew it was about kids and a camp and stuff. And I thought it was going to be a bit like um, there's another Disney film that's maybe not not uh, aged quite as so well, which is the Heavyweights, which is like Ben Stiller being mean at a fat camp, a kids fat camp sort of thing. Oh, oh, yeah. It's I don't think it's aged as well, but it's you can definitely see some. It, it, it's almost like the prequel to Dodgeball. I think you can right. sort of see there's there's links to that character and the way that goes. But um, but yeah, I, I love the Western ac- aspect of it. I love the kind, and, and again, it gets very dark with some of the stuff it's exploring in there, like the kind of the racial bigotry and um, and all the stuff in that. I love the kissing Kate Barla stuff. I think's brilliant. Um, and yeah, it kind of all kind of mixes together. And again, it's. It's mature, yet again, it's quite joyful and it's fun. Um, and I think it's just got that right balance for me of everything that I would want from from a film and a kids' film. It's not. It doesn't again. It doesn't talk down to you. It doesn't patronize you. It's like these. You know, they these kids could die out there. They could get be- bitten by these lizards. They could die of thirst. Yeah, those lizards you know. are freaky. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's literally a guy shooting a gun around the camp. They could get shot at any point. Like it's, you know, it's it's definitely it has that that serious aspect to it and like the the bullying that goes on and the the stuff the kind of usual like new fish prison stuff like oh well uh you're gonna give me your pudding and i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna you know um we don't we don't see all this th- stuff that happens in adult prison films thank god um <laughs> not not disney appropriate um uh, but yeah i i think mike picked an absolute belter with this one i agree i think the performances are, are good i think john voight unfortunately became mr sir as he got older um mm. which is a real shame um <laughs> uh, but yeah i th- i I think this is a banger. Absolutely. Lots of fun. Silly, fun, but serious all at the same time. This all Freaky Friday are my two favourites for different reasons, but I think they're both amazing. Yeah. Have you seen this film before out of interest? Yes, I have very mm. much so. Um, I have seen all of these films before. Yep, yeah, Holes saw again a long time ago, much Brighton. longer than all of you. Uh, Brighton! <laughs> Brighton. Um, <laughs> I went to Brighton and I watched Holes. Um <laughs> I love this film. It's great. I'll keep it quick so we've really got to wrap up. But um, yeah, absolutely love this film. So I've seen it before. Again, sort of one that's sort of on rotation or when it was on. You know, this is a classic weekend film. It's on, oh, Holes is on. Oh, it's 10 minutes in. Oh, I end up watching the whole thing. Um, again, I'm with you. with I love all the Western and prison tropes, all of those sort of things and how they're... I was going to say diluted for a younger audience, but I don't actually think they are. I mean, I don't know if any of you have read the book. It's based on a book, which is fantastic. Um, So I actually read the book first and then found out there was a film about it and then watched the film. Um, And I love how it explores how we tell stories and how we pass those stories down. And there's like these fairy tale elements to the stories that they're telling uh, or fantastical elements to the stories that they're telling. I love, and I, I, this is probably a bit stronger in the book, but I love how the adults and the children rename themselves to sort of mm-hmm. disassociate to the world around them. It's really interesting. And and then Zero and Stanley don't do that and how that sort of separates them from everybody else they've got the joy they've got the hope even zero who's you know had this horrible life and the fact that it explores homelessness for a young black boy and his black mother and those situations that people can get in and you know it's not their fault and that loss he feels at losing his mother I think is again really unusual for a children's film um the way that the the children are forced to do this labor for an adult's desire and this adult's desire is something that's been taken from her talking about generational trauma generational trauma from her dad um and grandfather you know and how it's passed down is really interesting and I think there's a lot to explore there and then I think the most important for me thing when I'm watching this especially now is we don't often get to see male friendship on screen and healthy male friendship. And I think that's really wonderful. Like the love between the the platonic love between these two boys is really wonderful to see. And we don't get any 
distasteful jokes around it or anything like that. It's just a very loving friendship. They have a romance. Romance doesn't have to be sexual, you know? Um, And I think that's so amazing to see. And I think what a positive thing for children and teenagers and parents of those children and teenagers who are watching this to see on screen. And I just think that's really important and unusual. And I also think we get something about the worlds that the boys at this camp get to live in. You know, Stanley is an outlier in the camp. He is, his family's not rich, but they're fine, you know, and they're all right. But the rest of the boys in this camp have had traumatic lives and are at a disadvantaged position. It's about class, right? And how the camp takes advantage of these people because they see boys from their backgrounds as meaning nothing. But we see that these boys are actually really important and they have families and they will create their own family to survive. You know, one of them is like, tell my mum, you know, I love her and all of that sort of thing. I also think it's just these small things going through this film that, again, much like some of the stuff we talk about in Freak, I was talking about in Freaky Friday, it's really unusual and really important to see. Um, it's a great film. I Freaky Friday is my favourite out of the four that we've seen. And then it's Holes, I think, is a really great film. Go and read the book if you haven't. Go watch the Holes if you haven't. And then Sky High and then Bed, bed Knobs and Broomsticks for me. Good. Good stuff. We did it. We did it. We are... We've come to an end of another lovely Disney discussion. Uh, but what, pray tell, is next? <laughs> I'm so excited. Well, last year, Dan, last batch, Dan's was the weird and films that had a bit of up and downs to them. So what's what's um, Megan's going to be? All of these are fantastic movies. Are they, I hope anyone I anyone that says otherwise is a liar. <laughs> so we're going to watch High School Musical 1. High School Musical 2 and High School Musical 3. Woohoo! Woo! I actually own the CD of, I used to own the CD of the first High School Musical. So I was, me and Megan. I am we, fucking buzzing. Our generation was wrapped up in that. So is that, is that, is that when you weren't telling people you were watching That So Rave and you're like, I have the CD, but no one will ever know. I'll put that the headphones in exactly. and no one will hear me hearing it. That is exactly what happened at that age. Yes, I didn't tell anyone I had the High School Musical CD or how much I enjoyed some of the songs in High School Musical okay. 2, including Hey Bata Bata, Hey Bata Bata Swing. not a very good one, but we can but... discuss that. But High School Musical, guys, it's everyone, crazy. that's what we're going to listen to, guys and gals. Ugh. High School Musical 1, 2, and 3. Right. Your boy! That's just for Sharpe. That's all I'm saying. Well, uh, well, and we'll have to get the deleted scene. We'll have to make sure Dan at least sees the oh deleted God, that song. deleted scene is awful. I don't even want to put we that have on to you. Make that's sure that's spoken about. I'll, the I'll deleted find, scene from High School it. Musical 2 I'll is vile. I'll find it. I mean, if I'm going to suffer, at least we're all in this together. Like this. <laughs> all in this together. I know that bit. <laughs> <laughs> I know that song. I know that song. But yeah, but at least at least we can suffer together. And then for another Disney discussions, we can go watch the stage production of it. <laughs> oh, not not the high school musical, the musical show. Or whatever no, the no, 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 not that. But you could, oh. I, I've seen high school musical as a musical. I saw it at the Mayflower, which really? is the theatre. Yeah. Huh. And I, I, thought you, I thought you were going to say, let's do Camp Rock next. I made, made Mike watch, watch that the other why, day. Why wouldn't Camp we? Rock. She made me watch Camp Rock is a Camp... fucking fantastic film. Okay. Not, I've not it's... seen any of them. I will it's hold... the wish version. Yes, I will hold... you keep it yourself, I will hold Dan. judgment. I'll hold judgment. Yeah, it's the wish yeah. version of High School Musical. It's the wish <laughs> version of High School Musical. We'll so see. it's like, if you love High School Musical, it's kind of more of that. If you hate High School Musical... I... Hey, I watch all sorts. I watch Lady Bird. I watch Cannibal Holocaust. You know, we I, I try it all out. I mean, I'm, I'm up for anything. So I could end up loving these. Love Freaky Friday. Love Sky High. You know, I, I love most of those. So it could happen. It could happen. Minds can be changed. Things yeah. can happen. Uh, right. Well, where can everybody find everybody's stuff? Grits gets fit. Instagram. Pa- even- Patreon. <laughs> Bosh. Nice. Genuine chit chat, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. Subscribe on YouTube and stuff. And um, yeah, you can find the Disney Discussions playlist over there as well. If you want to listen to all the amazing episodes we've done. Yeah. At Femon Collective, at Rear Carrington, Instagram. Done. Boom. <laughs> Spider Down and Secret Balls.com. Oh, boy! 
go go to all the places they're all good in the show notes blah 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 right we'll see you next time we're going back to high school bye Woo-hoo! Woo-hoo!